Curiosity is a robot now doing measurements on Mars. Its instruments incorporate many of the concepts we deal with in 3091. Today's screencast will deal with just one of these instruments, the chemistry and mineralogy instrument that's located right here on the robot. The instrument incorporates a x-ray tube. As we've talked about, it generates x-rays. The x-rays are collimated by passing through a pinhole. The column of x-rays then pass through a sample holder which contains a thin layer of powder composed of Martian soil. As they pass through, x-rays will diffract and only certain angles of diffraction will occur because of the crystalline material in the sample. The diffracted photons impinge on a phosphor type screen that's embedded in a CCD array. Shown in this image is the first diffraction image obtained by Curiosity from the surface of Mars. Because of the cylindrical symmetry, the diffracted beams occur at angles with cylindrical symmetry and you see them here. By measuring the intensity as a function of position on this screen, we can obtain this diffraction pattern that's shown up here. You see the intensity on the screen as a function of 2 theta here. The second type of measurement obtained from this instrument is called X-ray fluorescence. X-ray fluorescence is very similar to what happens in an X-ray tube, except that we do it on a sample. Imagine an atom in the powder. It has electrons in different energy states. So let's say this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. And of course there's electrons in each of these states. Now if I hit this atom with a photon of high enough energy, it will actually knock this electron out. And, and I'm specifically pointing to this inner shell electron at an n equals 1 state. When it does that, it'll create an empty position here in the n equals 1 state. And the atom will have to relax by allowing an electron in the n equals 2 state to drop down. When that happens, you get a characteristic x-ray associated with the transition from n equals 2 to n equals 1. As you know, that's the k-alpha radiation. Similarly, if you have an electron in the n equals 3 state that drops to the n equals 1 state, you're going to have an l-alpha radiation emitted. This can happen for each of the atoms that is in the powder sample and as a result you'll see characteristic x-rays for each of the atoms that are present in the sample and that's shown in this graph where I'm plotting intensity of x-rays as a function of their energy that's the same thing as 1 over wavelength and these peaks will occur at the L alpha or K alpha lines for the respective atoms. You can also get an idea of the relative abundance of each of the atoms just by comparing the intensities so for instance in this to first approximation you might say that calcium is enriched in the sample over cobalt. So in this way we can determine not only the chemical makeup of the powder sample but also which crystalline material is present. Obviously the folks that designed this instrument had taken 3091. 